Hey, I'm Tim C. Hey, I'm Landon Blanks. And you're listening to Hacking Concrete. Yeah! All right, so we were presented with quite a dilemma this month, and we kind of just aren't sure how to handle it sometimes. So I guess the, and the, and the question that we are dealing with today is, when do you throw a competitor and or a contractor that you're working for, when do you throw them under the bus? Because we've thought about this a lot. We're like, what do we do? How do we say anything? And the answer we have come to is never. Right. Never. Don't do it. <laughs> and this is why. And it's so many different examples because let's just say you come onto a project that that they have, in a customer viewpoint, they have not done well. And they've been kicked off the job or else they've been finished and didn't get paid. The problem is, is that we have zero idea what happened. And on top of that, it's like, like we were talking, it's like this customer... It's already going to be very tough from here on out. Yeah. Because they're usually angry. They are usually have high tensions about the situation. Time limit's gone. You know? It is. They're usually, they're usually wound up. Would, usually wound up. Yeah. So we got a few situations that we can explain it kind of like where we could have done it, but we didn't. It's a, it's a wide spectrum because on one side, like if you go there and the job doesn't look that, doesn't look that bad, obviously you're not going to we're not going to lie and say it looks bad. I think some people maybe would be opportunists and, and take that chance to say, this looks awful. Let me fix it. But we, we choose not to go that route usually. But then on the other extreme side, you can't go there and look at a job that actually is awful and mm. pretend that it's okay. Just cause you know, the guy that did it and you're friends with the guy that did it. Yeah. But it's just one of those things is that you, again, you don't know what happened on the project. It's true. Yeah, that's right. It could have done anything. I mean, they could have had other guys working. They could have done, just could have been a weird situation. It's, it, it's like the one we just did recently. Um, we, we got asked to come to a project and the floor, the guy had been working on about 5,000 feet for about a month. And it looked like the floor had just basically been scratched, mm -hmm. you know? And so obviously he was having a hard time with it. And so he was trying to polish it, right? He's trying to polish it. And so instead of, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like at that point, if if you were to throw this guy under the bus and then you produce a bad product, good grief, man. Yeah, you know? it'd be it would be bad. Right. Right. So so I basically just we you know, we decided we did, hey, this is what we'll do. Um, but we're not gonna do this until you talk to him and I'm not coming back on this job site. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, we're not gonna like tell a we can't tell a potential customer just because they were working with someone else that we won't work for you. So there's like a balance. We're yeah, not exactly. gonna we're not gonna say we won't work for you, but we're also not gonna talk bad about the guy and get him kicked off the job. Right, because I'm gonna respect him and know that it's hard as crap to work in construction. You know, it's yeah. hard, and 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 concrete's hard too. There could, but uh, <laughs> there could be a million things that happens. Yeah, and 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 obviously he lost wages for being there for a month. Yeah. So, and we're gonna get to this later on this particular situation, but on a later story. Um, for all we know, that someone told him to do what he's doing a certain way, and that's why it's happened, coming out the way that it's coming out. He exactly. might have been directed. Exactly. So, so anyway, we were ready to go on the project. I showed up every morning ready to go in, but the guy still didn't get his stuff out. Um, <laughs> How awkward would it be? And I'm not going to bring my stuff. So why, why would you? It would be really awkward to be like inside. Right. Yeah. Hey, man. How's <laughs> yeah. it going? Nah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but it ended up. Again, in those situations, it's like it's like sketchy. It's like, is this guy gonna even like what we do? But man, it turned out great. Yeah. Good guy to work for. Have you seen that meme where it's the guy with his arm around a girl and he's looking back at the other girl? That'd be <laughs> yeah. kind of like that. You you would be the other girl. The contractor would be the guy, <laughs> right, and the right. and the polishing guy would be the girl under the arm. That's funny. We'll put that right here. <laughs> All right, and, and and the funny thing too is about throwing people under the buses there were machines in there that was provided by one of our major, one of the people that we buy our most products from. They rented it to him. I know rental, rental machines and our rental stuff in our business. is just, it just wrecks our industry. <laughs> so then you go back like, man, just go throw that company under the bus. What are they doing? Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't say all that. No, you can't. I mean, it's, it, rental stuff, rental stuff really, really messes us up because we basically don't do stamp concrete because of rental, rental stamp concrete stamps. Mm -hmm. we, we can't do it anymore because either we're bidding against people that haven't really spent any money to get into the industry, into the business. So they're able to do stuff for cheap. And then, and then in addition to that, we're bidding against, a, we're, we're fighting the, the battle of trying to 
prove to people that stamp concrete is a good product, which it is, but they've seen so many jobs where people didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the story for later time as to, I shouldn't say they don't know. It's just people miss minor details and it causes stamp concrete to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And and that's another story too, about how, how a lot of the things we do in decorative concrete is like the wild, wild west out there. Yeah. I mean, it is. So people are just making stuff up as they go and they're producing this product that people see the stamp concrete product that people see, and it's not good. Right. And you just can't compete against it because prices are low and, and the quality and the, for the people who can't afford to pay for a better quality, they're seeing this other stuff that looks ho- horrible and, and they're just thinking it. that I don't want that in my house. Right. So rental equipment for this job is the same kind of thing. Like it's going to, if, if, if anyone can go rent polishing machines and people actually start doing that, it's going to be tough to sell polishing because you're going to see a lot of floors that are like all swirly and mm-hmm. have all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to look like that Marine base we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was just, yeah, it, it's almost like it, I want to, I want to call up Sherman Williams and be like, man, what are you doing? Yeah. you know yeah that's true but they have to do it i know they're just trying to get i mean they're trying to make it just like we are so same yeah. deal we're not going to talk bad about the vendor or complain to the vendor because there's i mean everyone is just trying to get by right and that's obviously a completely reasonable reasonable thing but anyway that one worked out good that was okay um and i you know the other ones hmm. yeah i mean with the next one we're going to talk about the, the tv studio that one didn't work out so well. I mean, I guess it did work out well for us because we we completed the project and we were paid. We didn't lose anything. Right. But you want to tell the story? You No, go, you go ahead. Okay, so the this, the short of it, we won't get into like a, the intricate details of this, but the um, it's a big company that we're working for and one of their employees that is running the job tells us, come in, grind this, and then put epoxy down. Right. We want this epoxy. Mm-hmm. And... So we did that and we came in and we ground it. And once we were doing that, we realized that they had put a lot of Ardex patching all over the floor, which is just a patch. It's fine. O- over manhole covers. Yeah. And then we realized that they put them over manhole covers <laughs> and they put it over paint and all of these things. Yeah. And I think we asked about it and said, what should we do? Should we grind all this completely down? I mean, because it was, it was thousands of feet of patching, right? Mm-hmm. So to get rid of all that, it was going to be expensive. And the guy just said, well, the guy that put it down knew what he was doing. Just go over it. Mm-hmm. so we did that and and a year later they had some moisture issues with our stuff that we put down and we looked like idiots we looked like idiots and a big national company came in and did it we didn't even get asked to do it no so that's that's a perfect example of how we probably got thrown under the bus right there maybe we didn't who knows but it's possible that the owner of that product didn't even know that we did it so it's it may be a non-issue for us but it may be and it's a big customer, but I can see that national company coming in there and saying, what did these guys do? Right. And they should say, I mean, they should think that, I mean, this stuff is chipping, it's breaking up, it's bubbling. I mean, they put patch over glue and over manhole cover and then put epoxy over it. That's what they think happened probably. Right. So is that, is that, is that what you do? We, do we at that, we just man up and say, no, we're not going to do this. Yeah. How do you do that to a big, big construction company? You can't tell the guy, no, we're not going to do this. I know. Cause then, then he's on the line with his boss. If we tell him we can't do this because what you did is, is idiotic. Right. Then he's got to go to his boss and say, I'm sorry. I'm, I got this guy to put down 3000 feet of patching and we shouldn't have. And now we got to pay these guys to grind it up. Right. I mean, I guess we should have. I think that's the answer. You, 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 you need to stand by your guns and know that they're we, not going to like this. Yeah. It's not going to work. Yeah. We should have. I guess we should have told him. Tough situation, though. Well, we did tell him. I guess we should have insisted. I mean, mm-hmm. we'd have had to go on over his head to do it. And that just is weird. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. I mean, do we do we call his boss and say, this guy doesn't shouldn't have done this, and we need to address this now? Should we have done that? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Should we have done that? <laughs> yes. That project. How do you think that project manager would have felt? Oh, yeah. We can't a, go above a good, his head. A good friend. Of, you know, no, no. You can't go above his head. No way. No way. But that's an example of why... If you are coming in behind us in that job, you shouldn't just immediately say mm-hmm. those guys are idiots because yep. you don't know. We don't know the story. Yeah. Which brings us to job number three. Right. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Are you listening? <laughs> we want it to be like John Boy and Billy where there's just people laughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> then this all brings us to job number three, project number three. And this one's a fresh one. And mm, I'm, La- I'm, Landon's a little sensitive mm. about it. 
I'm a little upset about this. <laughs> it just happened yesterday. Mm, mm, mm. And we're actually doing this podcast today because it happened yesterday. And we were just saying, yeah, we should, we need to talk about this because. Right, right. So in the polishing industry, everyone knows that there's these companies that travel all over the place. And a lot of them do great work. They just have a, they just have a different business model than we have. There's nothing against them. Right, right. And, and, and so, and so. What happens is a lot of times you'll have stores like Dollar Generals and things like that where these people travel all the country and they do it. And, and, and lots of times when that happens, your local construct, construction companies pick them up and then they start getting bids from them. And what happens is we've done a lot of projects for our local government here and we've done them all and they're very detailed. Um, we cut the floor into all these design patterns and it's full aggregate and I just call them up, but I hadn't heard. We hadn't got the. I thought we. I, I thought we we were awarded the job. And they call us back and say, "Oh no, you, you got you got beat by by four grand." I'm yeah. like, "All right, well that's that's understandable. It's, that's high." But who's doing it? Is it someone local? Like, oh no, somebody out of Ohio. <laughs> so somebody out of Ohio. We've worked for this company for our entire existence. Yeah. And somebody comes in from Ohio. Beats us for a few thousand dollars, and we don't even get a call saying, hey, you were a little high, this company out of this other state, you know, what can you do? Now, the argument to what I'm saying now is what? We've been told that that's not fair to that bidding company, right? It, yeah, the argument against, against them saying that you were a little high was this, this other contractor, has I've, I've said that to him point blank before, the owner of another company, and he just straight up said, well, that's not fair to them. You need to give me the best number you can regardless of what, any, if it, what anyone else does. But in this situation, was so detailed. Yeah. So much goes into this project. It's, it's super custom. We'll play some clips over what we're saying. To just be beat like that by, by, by a company out of state. And the office is literally a half a mile up the road. The yeah. construction company. So it's just weird. So, so, it's at that, so at that point, I get mad. So we talk about throwing people under the bus. Immediately, I call Tim, and I'm all upset. I'm like, we need to call the architect. We know this architect. So do we do that? Do we, do we throw him under the bus? I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I'm not sure. Not sure. I get that they're trying to just make as much as they can. The contractor. I wish they would have called and said, "Hey, you're a little high." Don't you feel like they should? They should say, "Can you, can you work on your number? Is, do you yeah. have any room to work on your number?" And not tell us what the other bid is. Yeah, which leads us to this. So, so, so we often try to do. Do should we as business people do piddly stuff just to try to help people out? Right. Because this happens and. Yeah, so that we're trying to balance, like, we're forever doing stuff that is like, can you come and paint this two-by-two two block and take a whole day to do it? And, and we, we go and do it, and we don't know what to charge. And, like, I, I did a, a bathroom for, for somebody, and I spent two days on it, and I, and I asked him, is $450 okay? Two days and two days, three gallons of, of material, and is 450 okay? And they were like, no, that's way too high. Yeah. <laughs> but then on the next job for that contractor are they gonna not hire us for over a few thousand dollars you know what i mean like on the real ones so what do we do are we agreeable to doing these penny any jobs should we just told them on this 450 fifty dollar job should i just said before we went two thousand dollars that's our minimum right should i have done that but we didn't though we don't do that because we think oh we're going to try to help them out right which and, is and, but if we're not if it's a two-way street <laughs> do we want to should we be helping them out if we're not going to get the Hey, could you tighten your number a little bit? Call. Exactly. Why? Why don't we just get that number? And again, you, we always admit that Tim and I, Tim and I always admit we don't obviously see things right all the time. So, you guys can help us out with that. <laughs> yeah, you were mad yesterday, and then or, yeah, you called me midday yesterday, and then I think last night after I worked out, I called you and said, "Yeah, I was thinking about this," and yeah, then I was all mad. <laughs> yeah, and 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 and, and, then, and then today I said, "Look, I know, I know the I know the the local government employee." That is over top of this project. I'm going to call him. Yeah. I actually think you should call him. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I think it's just business that, that they got somebody else for less. That's fine. But the cause, right? We've worked uh, with you for so long. Yeah. But again, is that fair? Maybe, maybe it, you and I are not seeing this right. Yeah. I mean, if that's their policy not to, do, not to give people a second chance, then I think that we should keep that in mind when it mm -hmm. comes up to, for them to go do these little penny any jobs. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, think you did that, you know, you, you, you did that. You're going to do a patio for him and you didn't want to do. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah. This is the same contractor who did this. There was, there was this 
two hours away, a room that's like 10 by 10. And I spent like half a day trying to figure out some like traffic coding thing that they specified and no one would sell me a small amount. And I was embarrassed to give them a price of two or $3,000. And in hindsight, had this happened before, I should have just said $4,000, whatever. And, mm-hmm. and not thought twice about it because if it's just business coming to us, you know, if it's just business on their end that we're not going to get you over a few thousand dollars, that's just business then we need to look at it that way too that's and say, true. that's, that's just business. Mm-hmm. I'm bidding this as high as I want and I, you know, get somebody else because mm-hmm. you, you're going to get low bid anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that, you know, if, if I'm not protecting the next job by doing this for you for a cheap price, if, you know, if the next job you're going to get the cheap guy anyways, then why do I care about this little thing? Mm-hmm. It's kind of mean to feel that way, but it's the truth. And maybe it's just, maybe it's just the, the a one, one individual's personality. Maybe, because I do feel there are guys that would work with us that would say, hey, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it used to be a lot of handshake, good old boy. Yeah. And now it did. it's not so much like that. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there's a guy it, there's a guy at um, school in town that we work for all the time, and he would just flat out tell us right, on the, right off the bat. He would want a number in person. He won't, he won't want me to say the number to him of what it would cost. And immediately he would say, I know that this is going for this amount. I want you to do it for this amount. And we were like, okay, that's fine. Right, right. Actually, I witnessed him doing it before we were grinding concrete, before we were partners with you. Um, we were doing a 15,000-foot job, and I had a um, this old semi-retired guy. We had a grinder. He would prep jobs for me, and he was there talking to this guy at the university, and he said, I would like to do this for a dollar a foot. And he just said, no, that's, that's too much. <laughs> but will you do it for 70, 70 cents? And the guy said, yeah. And I liked that. I do too. I love it when, you, when it's straight up. I guess one more thing that, that's not on the list. Going back to this Penny Any Jobs. I was doing a small project on some this, these steps in town. And they didn't want like a standard texture. They wanted a, something different. They didn't want it to look like a pool deck. I made them a few samples. And, and they were like, yeah, I like these. But I like this other color. And th- this guy's boss that was hiring me. His boss's quote to him. And he, he told me this was... Make these guys work for it. Mm-hmm. Make them make you samples. Make them work for it. Like So here I am doing a job for not very much money because I was embarrassed to charge a lot. I wasn't embarrassed. I just felt funny about charging. On a small job, you just never make very much money on it. and you, I would have to charge double to make what I want to make. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is. And it, it's gonna, a small job is going to take three days, and I can do the same in the same three days, I can do one that's 10 times as large. Yes. Like, no joke, no exaggeration. Mm-hmm. So in this small job, I felt funny about giving them a price that I was happy with, and I gave them a price that I was just trying to appease them with, thinking, and they don't see that I'm, I'm doing a favor. And then from their end, his boss is telling him, make him work for it. <laughs> like, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's, like, telling him to make him spend time to get you whatever samples you want. Make him work for it. Right. So, like, it's not a two-way street. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I guess my point in the whole thing is, is that we can't think about our, – our rules should be, unless it's we have a good old boy handshake relationship with, that per, with the owner of that company, that our rules should be we don't do favors. Right. We don't do favors. But also, we need to, on our end, we need to make sure that we are trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Like, if a, if, if a company is willing to say, these are my guys, yeah. then we need to be – Fair and, 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 and fair priced and legitimate market price and not ever take advantage of that as well. Then as a company policy, it just seems like that we should be like, um, if, if you, the contractor, are always going to take the low bid, then we, as the people doing the work, need to always bid every single project to where we're happy with it if we get it. A guy that, a guy that, works, a guy that worked for me, he's, um, he's a guy that, I, I still have this in my mind. This is one of the first things he said to me. And he's just a guy that worked for me for a few months. And he said that if when you're awarded the job, if you are not happy that you got awarded the job, then you bid it too low. Right. So that just needs to be policy. And on these small jobs, you need, know, to, need to be happy if we get them. And if, and if we lose them, to the big, why do we care if we lose it? If they're getting low bid, who cares? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just don't like being that way. Right. That's just a really rigid uh, really greedy way of, you know, uh, greedy might not be the word, but it's. Well, I mean, hey, some some companies are set up on on low prices, and that's the way they run their business. It completely eliminates relationship from it. It does. 
It like, does. It doesn't it, matter our personalities. And none that's of that matters. Us all the way back around this podcast because it is all about relationships. And I am mad on this last one we talked about because I felt like we had a relationship, and we we didn't. Right. Sounds like you got friends owned by a company. We got friends owned. Yeah. We did. That's funny. <laughs> that's actually very funny. <laughs> You ought to put that in there somewhere. He said, yeah, he said we got friend zone. That's like, explain that to me in my old mind. So you thought you had a relationship with someone that they didn't think you had? <laughs> we thought, that's right, we thought we... <laughs> <laughs> so put it in there, you got to say Yeah, it. so we thought we were, we thought that we had a, a relationship with them. That's right. And all of a sudden they're like, well, hold on now. <laughs> hey, too close now. Don't get I'm too I'm going to go talk to this, I, I'm talking to this guy too. <laughs> <laughs> friend zone unbelievable that's awesome i told you we should have given mike i know <laughs> we would love to hear what what you are dealing with though um if you want to dm landon he's at modern po- at modern polish concrete i'm at tim dcva we're also on linkedin we talk a lot on there um we'd love to hear from you if you have ideas just send us a message thanks for this see you next time